Lights. Camera. Review. The Boy and the Heron is a 2023 Japanese anime film. After the sudden death of his mother, Mahito goes to live with his father and his new stepmother. As he explores his new home, he wanders into a fantasy world where he's given a mission. I have always been a fan of Hayao Miyazaki films. He has complex stories with relatable messages. His latest film has unnerving scenes and carries similar tropes to other Miyazaki films. The Boy and the Heron strays a cohesive story, becoming a strange fantasy-like fever dream. At the heart of the film is the classic Miyazaki trope. A young boy finding himself in a magical land, faced with challenges that demand courage and resilience. Mihito is overcoming a loss and trying to accept his new stepmother. His characterization is confusing as to what he's trying to conquer. Originating as a Japanese language film, this film is dubbed in English. Luke Zapataban voices the protagonist, Mojito. More credits include Kara Fukuhara, Gemma Chan, Robert Pattinson, Willem Dafoe, Christian Bale, Mark Hamill, Florence Pugh, and Dave Bautista. While watching this movie, my friend whispered to me that Robert Pattinson voiced the mysterious heron. I had to wait until the end credits to see if that was true. You would hardly believe that this is the same actor from the Twilight series who voices this character. He needs to do more voice work. Like most, if not all, Miyazaki films, the boy and the heron travels into a fantasy world. This film was weird, deriving of a man in a heron costume, which I never quite got, and talking human-sized parakeets. Miyazaki has worked on this film since 2016. Coming from Studio Ghibli, this film had a chance to fulfill more attempts at its story and creativity. It reminded me of other Miyazaki films like Spirited Away and Howl's Moving Castle. The boy in the heron struggles to be something, adding forced material to what could have been an exciting story. Most of the events feel random. We don't invest enough in the characters or the film's moral. Briefly, a character tags along with Mojito on his adventure, but vanishes. It's not addressed until the third act on the character's disappearance. The original title for the film is How Do You Live? That's a title you don't hear often. After reading others' reviews, this film is meant to be philosophical. I may have to watch it a second time to understand the meaning, as all Miyazaki films are up to interpretation. On a good note, this film is the first hand-drawn and non-English language animated film to win a Golden Globe. The animation is the best part of the film. Miyazaki always develops incredible attention to detail in every frame fluid character movements, and vibrant colors to create a visual spectacle that transports viewers into a dreamlike fantasy. Young audiences may find the film unsettling. I certainly did. Before the reveal of the heron's identity, its creepy voice and its design were nightmarish. In one scene, Mojito beats himself with a rock until he's bleeding. There's a lot of blood, and... The weird talking parrots are a weird addition. One other disturbing scene involves frogs covering mojito. The Boy and the Heron is a complex film. Like myself, it's important to talk about the story to understand its themes. For anyone who's a Studio Ghibli fan, take a look at The Boy and the Heron. There's more wrapped in its layers. What are your opinions on The Boy and the Heron? Do you have a different interpretation? The Oscars is a chance to talk about these films. Another film that has been up for discussion is Killers of the Flower Moon. Catch my next Oscar week review. Like, comment, subscribe to my channel or to my Patreon. My name is Marielle, and this has been another one of my movie reviews.